On the news, court stops INEC from ending voter registration on June 30th. Oyebanji meets Buhari says APC didn't buy votes during Ekiti governorship poll. And Lagos residents lament as petrol queues resurface. Glad to have you join us on News Now. I am Falashade Ogurinde. Nigerians who wish to participate in the continuous voter registration CVR may now do so. This comes as the Federal High Court in Abuja stopped the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, from ending the CVR exercise on June 30. Justice Mobilaji Olajuwon on Monday granted an order of interim injunction following the hearing of an argument and motion experte by Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project and 185 Nigerians. Serapat said the deadline should be pushed forward in the same manner INEC extended the deadline for the conduct of primaries by political parties. The electoral umpire had fixed June 30 as the deadline for the suspension of CVR across the country ahead of the 2023 general elections. The governor-elect of Ekiti State, Biodun Uyebanji, has fought her the allegation of vote buying against the All Progressives Congress, APC, in the just-concluded governorship election in the state. Uyebanji made this known on Monday while briefing State House correspondents shortly after I met with President Mohamed Obari at the presidential villa in Abuja. Presidential, he explained that neither he nor the ruling party was involved in vote buying as alleged, saying they can for votes from the electorate which led to their victory at the poll. He insisted that he won the election based on his previous performance as a secretary to the state government in the state. We are here essentially to present to His Excellency the President, Mohd Buhari Jisefar, the newest member of the governor's family, the governor-elect of Ekit State whose election you all witnessed just last Saturday, some 48 hours ago. We brought him to meet with the president, and we do so with gratitude to Almighty God for making victory our lot. The relationship has been commendable. We like it. We'll work to sustain it by the grace of God, and we'll so do uh, in the interests of the survival of democracy in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Election Management Committee, chaired by Governor Badaru Abubakar, did an amazing job of monitoring the election. And we, d we did tell Mr. President that this is an election where the Bibas machine worked properly and the results of the election were in in record time and the security arrangement was quite impressive and this couldn't have been possible without Mr. President's commitment to building institutions that can deliver free, transparent and fair processes. The Ekiti state governorship election, which held on Saturday, has come and gone with the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Biodun Uyebanji, emerging winner of the election, while Uyebanji garnered a total of 187,057 votes. Shegun Oni, candidate of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, and candidate of the People's Democratic Party, garnered 82,211 votes and 67,457 votes, respectively. The the election was, however, marred by reports of vote buying across many polling units as voters were said to have been offered money to induce those already on queues to vote for their candidates. It was gathered that between 5,000 naira and 10,000 naira was allegedly shared to each of the ruling voters. 
To discuss this further, Nelson Ekujimi, political affairs analyst, joins me now. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, you observed the AKT election, which saw the emergence of APC candidates, Biodo Yimaji, as winner. Uh, what do you make of the election? Oh, thank you very much. The elections, by all standards, uh, shows that you know, we have made remarkable progress with regards to our electoral system. For the first time in a long while, we saw that INEC performance in this election, if you ask me, was almost uh, 95 to 100%. Because in most polling units, as, as at uh, 830 to 9 a.m., INEC, INEC had opened most polling stations across the state. We had 2,455 polling stations. And by 9 a.m., almost 95% of those polling stations were up and running. You know, that tells you clearly that, you know, INEC is up and And uh, at the conclusion of elections, uh, in a record time, we, results started trickling in that, you know, you quickly knew where the pendulum would swing. Uh, talking about security, the security was top notch. You need to have been there that to have seen the security apparatus, how they were deployed. And, you know, it was so visible that any would be troublemaker knew that, oh, today is going to be a doomsday. So troublemakers or people will have to survive the process using violence. They stayed away uh, almost completely. Uh, by and large, the election has come. The results have been declared. Uh, nobody can dispute the fact that the results declared is the outcome of the will of the people. The people have spoken. Uh, some have alleged that uh, there were irregularities in terms of uh, voters' inducement. In some areas, like we always say, politics is local. You get to some polling stations, you hear complaints from persons, from party agents. And uh, because your responsibility as an observer is not to, you know, uh, interrogate that process, but, also, but just to take note. But in some other localities, especially in the rural areas, they conducted the election as though it was a family affair. You see people coming out and, you know, it was like a, a carnival, a merrymaking event. So the atmosphere for that election was devoid of intimidation. Uh, but the uh, inducement of voters is something we cannot gloss over. But in the midst of that, it shows you clearly, those who are saying votes don't count, at least, even if we admit that voters were induced, why were they induced? They were induced because the politicians and the political parties know that these are the people that will determine where the pendulum of election will swing. So that tells you clearly you that there. unlike Do you the not think, of, Sorry to interrupt you there. Do you not think um, th that the fact that um, some voters were induced with money um, to the tune of uh, between 5,000 to 10,000 naira actually mask the whole process entirely? No, except if somebody can give us a statistics of where those things occur, then we can, we can now arrive at that conclusion. But because you have witnessed it in some areas, you not be used to generalize. For example, I was in a Adwe Kitty. I in Adwe Kitty, I covered almost about twenty-five polling units with some members of my team. And this allegation that you have that we that has been right in the air, we only uh, heard about it in just about two police stations. In other police stations, people conducted themselves quietly. In those police stations where this information came out, you need to see the rowdiness in that police station that the security agencies had an ethic time controlling them. And, you know, when you have such a large crowd, it gives room for all sorts of uh, activities to go on. But when you have people who are orderly, everybody will be on the guard. Everybody will watch one another. Then from Adekit, I went to a record with fellow do. I never saw anything of such. I know so complaints of such never occurred. From a record do, if a uh, fellow do, I, we moved to uh, Ikere, where we didn't even see such. But... People came and were telling us, oh, there are some parties are giving voters money. So for me, I don't think it has marred the process. It, the only reason or the only conclusion that can make us affirm that is if we take a statistics that out of 2,455 polling units, in 2,200 polling units, they were vote by. If we can confirm that authoritatively, then there's no doubt that it will have marred it. But in this case, Nobody can put, you know, uh, it statistics to police stations where this thing took place. For, for us, we observe this complaint majorly in Adoekiti, the state capital. And, you know, you cannot take that away because Adoekiti is a cosmopolitan city. But when you go to other local government, it is more of the community people. 
and you know these uh, allegations were not there in the air. Well, indeed, Nelson Ekujimi, political affairs analyst, thank you very much for your contribution. And back to Lagos, where fuel scarcity returned on Monday as motorists and commuters with jerry cans thronged filling stations in their numbers to buy the commodity, which was in limited quantity. The development is coming days after the unavailability of petrol surfaced in Ibado and the FCT Abuja. Speaking with TV360 correspondent who monitored the development, buyers lamented the high price and the extra charges imposed by filling station attendants. We just woke up this morning to discover there is queue everywhere. We can't really say if it's panic buying, maybe there is a false news somewhere or not. We can't explain now until perhaps if it persists within the week, then we begin to know it's real shortage. But most of the filling stations, I don't think they're dispensing fuel. For instance, this place is only one pump. If all the pumps are dispensing fuel, I don't think we'll be. I've been here since 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, almost three hours, but I don't think that they are selling. They are just selling maybe only two pumps. Well, we don't have anything to say. We are, uh, for us, we just continue praying. And the fire station also had dead. They are doing their own also. Instead of trying to sell for cars, still look at them. They are selling for jerry car because they know that they will make a lot of money from jerry car. The unfortunate thing is that they are not selling in vehicles. They are only selling in cakes, which they are making more money from it. For instance, in 20 liters, they expect you to give about a thousand naira before they can easily say to you, and that's very, very ridiculous. In these very hard times, I will know what we are facing. The youth are not happy, the country is not a happy matter. I mean, government should look at ways to address these things. People are not bringing keg. If they buy for it, they have to sell it because they use their money to pay for keg. They have to sell black market. Now it's like, even this police station now, they are doing black market because you can't expect me to buy Fuel on my gallon and pay money for the gallon, and you say I will not sell it. I will sell it in the city fuel station. The United Nations Global Compact Network Nigeria has promised to promote greater cross functional collaboration among business corporations to tackle issues that surround sustainability in the post COVID 19 era. A board member of the UN Global Compact Network Nigeria and Company Secretary MTN Nigeria, Uto Ekwana, made this noon at the open house event organized for over 70 heads of corporate organizations and sustainability influencers in Lagos. She urged participants to remain committed to the implementation of the 10 principles that are categorized into human rights, labor, the environment and anti-corruption. We're building new factories. Let's make sure that they're as environmentally protected as possible. When we're looking at um, waste from those factories, let's make sure that we're protecting the environment and the community around us. So when we're uh, employing people right through our supply chains, let's make sure we're giving them a living wage. In every case, it's about doing a great business, running a growing business, a thriving business, in a way that also furthers the goals that the communities need. That there needs to be more participation. I mean, the staff have to understand what SDGs are all about. They have to connect to it at different MDAs. So collectively, if there is that understanding and that culturization of SDGs ingrained into MDAs, we'll, make, we'll have more traction, in my view. From the private sector, I mean, you know, we're doing all the best you know, we can, and uh, we've uh, been able to partner with a lot of other organizations that we have common goals and like we mentioned uh, during the course of the open house you know we, we are very strong partners with the FDRA where we are you know we formed an alliance to take waste out of the environment as the three days warrant officers and senior non-commissioned officers interdivision competitions rounded off last weekend, the general officer commanding of the 81 Division Nigerian Army, Major General Umar Musa, 
has said that the competition was tailored to enhance the fighting efficiency and performance of troops in the field and to tackle the current security challenges in the country. The GOC was represented by the Chief of Staff, 81 Division, Brigadier General Ismaili Uluyedi, expressed satisfaction with a high level of competitiveness among the teams. The GOD also pointed out that the essence of the competition is to enhance the soldiers' fighting efficiency and performance in the field with a view to preparing them with the current security challenges in the country. Today will assist to improve your leadership traits, promote esprit de corps, and boost your morale. As you all know, it is better to sweat more during peacetime and be less during war. This year's competition has therefore proved the benefit of good training. The division will continue to implement our training schedule in line with Army Headquarters Training Directive. For the formation that excel in the various events and the overall champion during the competition, I say congratulations and keep it up. For the formation that have not done too well, you still have the chance of showcasing your talent in other competitions. We'll take a break here, but still to come, Nigeria owes 25% of global airlines blocked phone. D details of this story and more right after this break. Resilience. Look at you. Still standing after adverse politics stop your electric power purchase from powering our city. Still standing after adverse politics denied our city and your government revenue allocation for years. But you diligently turned it around and made our city self-sufficient and left a legacy of urban renewal and prosperity till this day. Now, you emerge tops with magnanimity and victory. Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, fight for us in the spirit of resiliency to deliver Nigeria from poverty and insecurity. The indomitable economic development agent Nigeria needs now. Watch this space. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred, but truth is universal. How, in practical terms, can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On DG360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, the future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. Hello? Yeah, I found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now you find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, so... <laughs> oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, no. You don't need to do this. We are only doing our job. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. God You're bless welcome. you. You're now I know police is really my friend. Yes. Friend. Which guy must be this one? I don't understand. You know your problem. You are greedy. I'm a policeman who is doing his job. All forms of corruption in the force. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Welcome back. Now here is a recap of our top story tonight. 
Nigerians who wish to participate in the continuous voter registration CBR may now do so. This comes as a federal high court in Abuja stopped the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, from ending the CBR exercise on June the 30th. Serapat said the deadline should be pushed forward in the same manner INEC extended the deadline for the conduct of primaries by political parties. But in case you missed any of our news bulletin or for more updates, do log on to our website on wwwtb 36 nigeracom You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and Google Plus at tv 360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we are TV360 online. Chinese territory Macau has on Monday began its second day of mass COVID-19 testing after dozens of locally transmitted cases were discovered over the weekend. The chief executive of Macau in a statement on the government's website disclosed that the latest outbreak came suddenly and has been spreading rapidly with a source still unknown. Most businesses have been forced to shut down including banks, schools, government services and other businesses to also, most residents are being asked to stay at home. In the meantime, however, casinos remain open. The testing of Mikhail's roughly 600,000 residents is expected to end on Tuesday. North Korea has extended as recorded 18,820 more cases of fever and no fewer and no new deaths amid its first official COVID-19 outbreak. This comes as North Korean authorities continue to insist infections in the improvised country are being brought under control. The country has reported more than 4.6 million cases of fever during its first official outbreak, but authorities have not reviewed how many of those patients tested positive for the coronavirus. I will take a breather here and return with more stories and business to stay with us. Resilience. Look at you. Still standing after adverse politics stop your electric power burgers from powering our city. Still standing after adverse politics denied our city and your government revenue allocation for years. But you diligently turned it around and made our city self-sufficient and left a legacy of urban renewal and prosperity till this day. Now, you emerge tops with magnanimity and victory. Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, fight for us in the spirit of resiliency to deliver Nigeria from poverty and insecurity. The indomitable economic development agent Nigeria needs. Now, watch this space. Welcome back. Abisola Dibayana joins us for more stories and business. Over to you, Abisola. Thank you very much, Falashadi. Welcome to Business News. The Supreme Court has upheld the lower court ruling stopping oil major Shell from selling its assets in the country until a dispute over a 2019 oil spill is resolved between the company and a community in the oil-rich Niger Delta. In March, a high court had barred Shell from any asset sale in the country until a decision is reached on the dispute. 88 communities in River State were awarded 
$1.95 billion, comp billion dollars compensation for an oil spill they blamed on Shell and which damaged their farms and waterways. Shell, which denied causing the spill, appealed the compensation verdict and the ruling blocking the sale of its assets. The company then went on to advertise for bids for the assets after filing an appeal. But the Supreme Court, in a ruling, ordered the parties to maintain status quo until a hearing of all applications from Shell and the communities in September. Well, we'll take a break now and return with a review of the stock market. Well, it's official. The bears have taken over the Nigerian Exchange Group as it continued its negative sentiment from last week to today, the beginning of a new week. The All Share Index decreased by 1.97% to close at 50,756 basis points. The culprits today are the same heavyweight from last week, like United Bank of Nigeria PLC and Dangote Cement, as they recorded a combined 28 naira loss. They are, all, they are topping our losers list for today. On the flip side, as our gainers list, Jaihees Bank and Regalies led five other gainers as they recorded a combined six cobble gains. Our market summary sees a total volume of 345 million units of shares valued at 3 billion era, exchanging hands in 5,075 deals. The Nigerian capital market analysts say they expect cautious trading on the stock market as possibility of continued profit-taking activities cannot be ruled out this week. This is because investors and traders across the globe are worried over the rising inflation and impending global economic risk session on the forums in the FTSE, the Dow Jones and the Nikkei. The FTSE ended higher on Monday, helped by strength in financial issues, which were recovering after the FT falls made last week as central banks globally hiked interest rates, raising worries over economic recovery. I can't say the same for Dow Jones as it is in the negative territory amid growing concerns that the Federal Reserve will be forced to drive the economy into a recession in order to rein in inflation. Japan stocks Nikkei also ended at a more than five-week low on Monday, with cheap related and energy stocks leading the losses while investors struggle to find market moving queues due to a US holiday. That's all on stock market reports. Back to Fola Shadi for the rest of the news. Well, many thanks, Bissela, for that update. And on the foreign scene, NATO Chief Jen Stoltenberg has warned that the war in Ukraine could last for years. The NATO Chief has in the past week ramped up calls for Alliance members to back Ukraine in its fight against Russia's invasion. Repeating his calls for NATO member nations to continue delivering weapons to Kyiv, Sotenberg said the hardware support could increase the likelihood of Ukraine being able to push Putin's troops out of the Donbass region. And in sports, President Mohamed Obari has directed the Nigeria Football Federation and FF to immediately commence the process that will lead to electing new officials into its executive committee at the expiration of the current administration in September. This was contained in a letter addressed to the president of the NFF, Hamaji Pinik, and signed by the Minister of Sport, Sunday Dari. The president also directed that the instrument of football administration in the country be amended to include other stakeholders who had been disenfranchised or denied equal representation in the NFF Congress. He further assured of the government's support to development of football in the country as he urged the leadership of the NFF to ensure that the amended statutes reflect the national yearnings. And that's the size of our news bulletin. Many thanks for watching. I am Fulashadi Ogurindi. Bye for now.